Okay, greetings and felicitations. What we have here is a 6-in-1 JAMA switcher, and it's going to be modded to delete the need for the remote control. Now, I have tested it, and it does work with the remote, but <clears throat> there are a couple of uh, rather brilliant folks over at the Killer List of Video Games forums, and they have put out a tutorial on how to mod these boards to get rid of the remote in favor of a six-way rotary switcher, six-position rotary switcher. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but I'm going to wire it up for this because that's what the mod calls for. But I am also, after that, I'm going to remod it to use some of these single uh, momentary push buttons. Because I'm going to wire it up both ways and see which way works better. Because my theory is that as you are switching between slot 1 through 6 on, on the switcher, you're going to be sending voltage, mainly 5 volts. You're going to be sending 5 volt signal uh, through the bores for a very split second. I'm not sure how sensitive some of these boards would be to uh, stray voltage, real momentary stray voltage. So um, I'm going to wire it up for this and see how it turns out. If it uh, causes issues or anything, I'm going to wire it up with the push buttons and try those. So, uh, But for now, I'm going to use the rotary switcher, six-way, six-position rotary switcher. When you get your board, the very first thing you're going to have to do is remove the daughter board that is the receiver for the remote. And this this little daughter board that sits right there. First thing you have to do is just get yourself some desoldering braid and a nice hot iron and desolder those uh, pins out of there and pull it out just like that. It's real easy and uh, I mean they just come right out. Assuming you know what you're doing. Uh, but the first step is to remove this daughter board. Now the second step is a lot trickier and a lot more involved and it's a real, a real bastard sometimes. But there are capacitors on here. This row of capacitors there are, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of these capacitors that you have to mount. Um, well, it doesn't have to be a surface mount resistor, but it needs to be a 100k ohm resistor, whether it's surface mount like these little bastards, or a ceramic resistor that you can put in line at, at uh, anywhere else you want. But um, I don't know if you can see, but I have soldered. No, you really can't. My camera is no good. I will uh, post a picture here of what it looks like from uh, provided from the KLOV forum. So here's what it looks like and what I'm talking about. Okay, now I've already done that. I have bought a bunch of these 100k ohm surface mount resistors. You can see how tiny these bastards are. Um, I laid them on there using my the blade of my razor knife, laid them on there, held them down and soldered them on. So you piggyback those uh, 100k ohm surface mount resistors onto those uh, that's it, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11, and C12. You piggyback those resistors on there because you have to dummy down the load on the, each of the slots. And the, normally the, the load is dummied down by this thing, but you have to simulate the load being dummied down. So that's what the uh, resistors, that's why the resistors are called for. So um, it's gonna, this looks just like it does in the picture. Trust me, I, got, I did the work, but my camera's not any good up close. Um, you might be able to see them on there. I'm not sure, but they're on there. Trust me, that, they're small little bastards. But so that's uh, the second thing you have to do. The third thing you have to do is just put your wires in these holes and run them to your rotary switcher. Now, the way it's wired up, I'm going to show you a picture here. Uh, check out this picture here, also from the KLOV forum. Okay. Now, referring to that, that picture, you've got, this is your negative 5. The very first pin to the right is negative 5. This one, the second one isn't anything. The third one is your ground, and you have board 1, board 2, board 3, board 4, board 5, and board 6. Now, I'm going off memory, so that may be backwards, but uh, these, these here are your six boards, and then the very first pin is your 5 volts, and the, second one, the third one is your ground. Sorry, the third one is your ground. So I just got myself a roll of 22-gauge uh, stranded wire, and I'm going to so put the wire through there. I'm going to tin the wire, put it through there, and solder it to the pad on the back side, and then run them to my ro six-way rotary switcher. Uh, I'm sorry, six-way rotary switch. After I ring it out and find out which contacts are from which position, left to right, then I'll get this wired up to here, and that'll pretty much be it. Uh, so I'm going to cut away here. When, I'm, when I cut back, I will have the wires in here and the wires on here, and I will have it all wired up, ready to test. So, one moment. 
And here it is as promised, not more than a few seconds ago, but through the magic of video editing, here it is, all done. I got my wires installed. And now I want to say that upon closer inspection and thinking about this a little bit more in detail, I don't think there's a, you actually need a wire in the ground post. You just need the, you need the 5 volts go into the rotary switch and then you need the corresponding six slots on the corresponding uh, connections on the rotary switch you're just switching five volts from one slot to the other so you don't really need the ground is all but so I didn't wire it in I took it out of the, I took it back out of there but um, I have not tested it yet so let's go test it out and one of the benefits of this using the switch is that when you boot the switcher up it will boot in whatever position the switch is in so if you leave it in switch three or slot 3, you leave slot 3 powered up, turn the machine off, turn the machine back on, and slot 3 will come back up and you won't have just a blank screen. So there's no more need to actually physically turn a slot on when you turn the machine on. It'll automatically default and turn on whatever slot was was on that was left when these uh, when you turn it off, whatever position the switch was in, it'll turn that slot back on. And we'll go, I'll go show you all that. But here it is. Let's go uh, hook it up on my JAMA test uh, setup and let's see what happens. All right, here we are. Here's the rotary switch. There's the switcher. And I don't have a knob for the rotary switch, so I'm going to just use a pair of pliers. But right now it's in, let's see here. Uh, okay, there's position one. So when I turn the board on, it should automatically default and turn on slot one. So can you even see slot one? Yeah, we can. Okay. So when I turn the board on, slot one should power up. There you go, slot one. I'm gonna turn, you can see both my hands here so there's no uh, remote being used. Here's slot one, slot two, oh. slot three, slot four, slot five, slot six. And there you go, ladies and gents. It's on 16, now watch, I'll turn it off. I'll turn it back on and slot six should come back on. And there it is. So now we'll go back the other way. Five, four, three, two, one. And there you have it. Real simple. Nothing to it. Solder your wires in. Solder your resistors on. Sorry it's so dark. Solder your uh, resistors on. Solder your wires in correctly. Solder them onto your rotary switch in the correct position. Uh, for those of you who are electronically inclined, it shouldn't be too hard. I figured it out. I mean, it only took me about 30 minutes to 45 minutes to do this whole mod, but um, <clears throat> it's not that difficult uh, or that time consuming, but I have an ele electronics background, so that's for easy for me to say. Those of you who don't have the electronics background, it might be a little more difficult, but uh, this is a complete success. So many props to the gentleman on KLOV who figured this out. I believe it's uh, Dog P is one of them. D-O-G-P and I, for the life of me I can't recall the other person but props to those guys. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, subscribe to the KLOV, KLOV forums and go and give those guys some respect uh, I would suggest doing that and I'll probably go research uh, more in detail of uh, Dog P and whoever else it was and uh, put them, uh, give them credit there in the, uh, the description below in the video here so that's it. Fully operational. Uh, you can use a switcher, six position switcher now, or six position switch. I keep saying switcher. You can use one of these now instead of the remote, and uh, this is a complete badass mod. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you can figure it out. If not, uh, feel free to ask questions. And uh, again, thanks to those guys at KLOV, and uh, that's about it. So again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.